Hey guys, welcome to today's video. I cannot even believe that it is this time again, where we go through the entire year and I share with you all of the worst products. I feel like I've tried thousands of products over the past year. Literally, I I think thousands. Yeah, I was gonna say hundreds and I'm like, no, it's way more than that. So these are the, uh, the total duds. Like there's no nice way to say it. They didn't work for me. I'm gonna go through exactly why, give you uh, my perspective on why they didn't work for me. Because again, um, whether it's just like a fails video or the end of the year recap, people get very sensitive. If this is a favorite of yours, keep using it. I always say that. Um, um, I always hope to encourage you to look for the reasons why I don't like it. If I'm like, oh my God, this was like so drying on my dry skin. And you're like, I have oily skin. It might work for you then. So, you know, take into account when you're watching my videos and other videos, you know, the skin type, what people want out of their products, like listen to all of those pieces of information. So um, again, no disrespect to any of these brands. I just don't like these particular products. So let's just dive right on in. Cheers. I'm filming at night, which I never do. And it feels like so quiet and like the world is kind of quiet and like kick back. And it's just going to be a good time to explore all the bad, you know? So let's do it. <sighs> Oh my God, is my natural deodorant working? Jeez, I sure hope so. Okay, it works great, but there are days. There are days. Ooh, I never talked about this. I never tried this on my channel. I never publicly shamed Tarte. That was a moment. Everybody hated Tarte because of their crap shade range with the Shape Tape Foundation. I agreed. I was like, uh, yeah, where's the rest of it? But I think moving into the new year, 2019 goals, I wanna focus on not jumping onto this whole canceled culture where if anyone or any business or any person in a business makes one false move that they're just done and there's no forgiveness. I think that that is a horrible way to live. I think that's a horrible way to treat people. And yeah, there are gonna be times and situations where it's very necessary for you to get rid of that toxic energy in your life and toxic people. And if people are rude to you personally in your day-to-day -day life, next, you know? But if it's a brand and they apologize and they're learning and they are trying to figure out a fix or if it was an oversight or whatever it may be. You know, I think we have to give room for people to progress. I think you learn and you lead by example and lead by choices that you make. So I chose to not talk about this. I finally tried it. And like the real funny thing is I hated it. I don't care for the doe foot applicator on any foundation. I have shared that with you guys before. And a lot of people are like, well, there's a doe foot applicator on your concealer, you're an idiot. I don't know about you, but I've never had um, acne underneath my eyes. Yeah, on one hand, you should probably be careful about bacteria near your eyes, sure. Um, but I'm just gonna be like plain simple truth. Uh, the reason that I'm so like, ugh, I wanna pump, I don't want air to uh, ruin the product, this and that, is because I don't want acne. And it's a vanity thing. And it's as simple as that. I found this to be very cakey. I found it to be difficult to blend and I just didn't like it. How do we feel about Tarte, guys? Are you, are you back on with them? Are we off of them? How are we feeling? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, so I wanna talk about a few things that I never talked about on my channel. I don't think I mentioned this. This is from First Aid Beauty. This is the Coconut Water Cream. This is going to hydrate, smooth, and recharge the skin. Now, I was using this for a minute. I like First Aid Beauty. I like that they use very simple ingredients. The approach is very clean. They're not perfect. I mean, there's no fragrance in here. It's allergy tested, that kind of a thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, but there is this issue, and I've been thinking about this a lot, where companies will go from being very aggressive with toxic ingredients, and yes, they're in such a small amount that the FDA has approved use for them, so it's not like they're doing something so horrible. I still don't want a lot of that in my skincare or body care, and I'm doing what I can to find alternative products, but then there's this other side that is doing like heavy emollients. It's natural, non-toxic, plant-based. And there's a lot of coconut in topical products for the face. And I break out like that. 
from Coconut. Now I have combo dry skin as an adult now, but I had cystic acne as a teenager. So what that means for me is that I have deep oil glands, larger pores, and I can clog up my pores more easily than someone that has had dry skin their whole life. So if you're like me and as an adult, you're like, my skin's now kind of on the dry side, maybe I need something a little bit more moisturizing, and you're like, I don't want this stuff over here, I want natural, you're gonna go for something and a lot of the time, you will have these heavy oils that are so clogging to the pores. You gotta do good research on it all, both sides. Uh, this one for me is a pass, I think specifically because of the coconut. I've made it a rule of thumb to only use coconut on the body. I'll use it maybe on the ends of my hair. Coconut oil can be great for oil pulling if you do that or are into that. Google it, it's something you can do in your like teeth routine. Also, I will say the more that I have just like taken the time to research and it's something that I enjoy, um, which is so funny because I actually had, like this is gonna sound so strange, but I had like three years ago a manicure with someone, it was like at a brand event. She picked your nail polish based off of your birth chart. I'm kinda in that, I'm kinda not. She said a lot of really crazy things. Like she actually said a lot of things that she was like, oh, in two years, your channel is gonna. And I was just like, really? Huh, and I had like 500,000 subscribers. So she told me all of these things, like my power color and what, my traits were and this and that. And I hadn't had anyone ever do that. Like I, maybe I'd read like my sign like on an app or like find out if I was compatible with someone, which I don't know why I always like, it was a rule of mine. I'd be like, what's your birthday? And then I'd be like, oh, we're perfect. Anyway, she told me something that I was like at first really like, no, that's not who I am. Um, she's like, you're really introverted. And I'm like, kind of, but I really love being social too. And I just, I love people and I love being with people. And she's like, you really thrive doing research. And that stuck with me because it's so true. I don't know why, but like the hours can just completely disappear. I'll look at the clock and it will be like four hours later, no kidding. And I will just be like layers deep in ingredients and what they do and, and the science behind you know, their molecular structure and why they work for this and why they work for that and why a company would put one ingredient in mouthwash and the same thing winds up in a toner. I just always wanna know more. So I love spending my time doing that more than reading or TV shows or anything. Like that's like a weird part of me, but I kind of love that. Um, and I retain information really well. So what I've really come full circle to is you can find good and bad and conflicting evidence about anything really. So while I'm telling you that I think coconut oil shouldn't be in skincare, I am sure that there are several people out there that could argue you know, back and forth as to why it should be in it. So with this type of thing and with your health, you have to always remember that you are in the driver's seat. If you're trying a new skincare item, write down how it's going for you. Figure it out by looking in the mirror yourself. You are your best advocate. Um, moving on, I, what is this? All nighter cherry scented? This came out at the wrong time of year. Let me just start there, okay? This, <laughs> this came out at the time of year where we are all like plugging our noses and drinking cough syrup, um, which is like the last resort. All nighter cherry just reminded me of bad feelings. And I don't wanna spray that on my face. I don't want a bad feeling on my face. So just stick to the original, cute idea. But also like for the love of God, can we just stop fragrancing everything? I'm telling you, I've ripped away fragrance from so much of what I put on my face. Like I only want natural fragrance, not synthetic fragrance. And my skin is already changing a little bit, which is really exciting. So I'll have to let you guys know how things keep progressing. Um, and then we have this. Oh, why is the tip of that brown? That is disgusting. Again, if we wanna talk about like fragrance, dear sweet love 
of God. You know who I feel bad for? The girls that work at Dry Bar. Now, I used to go in there quite often. Love getting a good blowout. Who does not love that? Oh, it's just like the best. I just want someone to like shampoo and like massage my head. Like I don't even want a regular massage. I just want like this. <laughs> Is that so weird? I just want like a nice scalp massage for like 15 solid minutes and then I'll be like a new woman. So anyway, they wash your hair, they dry your hair and they use so much of just hairsprays, texturizers, like their triple sec, which is such a great product. I do really love that one. But the whole place, if you go in, it actually looks like there's like this steam. You're kind of like, am I in the dry bar steam room or was there fire here or what? Like it's like smoky and you're breathing it in and it's irritating your lungs. I just don't think that's good for you. So now I am just like kind of like over the heavy fragrance in here. It's a dry shampoo foam. This is the Detox Whipped. It's just kind of greasy and a little bit heavy and it does not do anything near what my Briogeo does. And that one is just my tried and true. I love it so much, non-aerosol, nothing toxic in it. And it just soaks up all that oil and gives you like a nice zhuzh. Like I have it in my hair and I'm able to go like this and I have that texture. There's no greasiness or crunchiness or anything like that. So this is just I literally have no words. We're just, we're not spending time here. You all know, you all understand. If you haven't seen this video, I'll link it below. Okay, um, I told you guys I was going to let you know how I felt about the Milani Make It Last Matte. Not a fan. I felt very dry by the end of the day. And again, I have combo skin. So maybe that's more of a me problem than potentially a you problem, depending on your skin type. But this one has charcoal in it and it just, I don't know. I didn't like it. I really like their dewy formula and I was hoping that this would be kind of a gentle matte formula. It's not my favorite mattifying setting spray has to be from Cover FX. They actually have kaolin clay in there and you shake it up and there's like a little piece you can hear when you're giving it a good shake. The sprayer is really beautiful. Yes, it's more expensive, but you don't need to use much and it's very effective at keeping the skin nice and balanced. So that's a good one. This one ended up being a no. I need to get rid of these. I mean, fine, they'll go in a donation bin, but like, oh my God, have you ever seen like a more awful bobby pin? This will frustrate you to no end. And I feel bad, like I bought them. So I'm doing that thing where I'm like, well, I bought them, so I guess I have to use them. And uh, cause that's just been like drilled in my head my whole life of like, don't let anything go to waste. Like I can repurpose anything. Like I literally can look at like an old like basket or or candle, like once it's burned down, and I'm like, oh, this would make an excellent brush holder. And I'm like, dear Lord, do you need that? No, you don't, you have like five of them. So when I was in Target, did I really need to buy this? No, I thought it would maybe make my life easier, but in the end, it just frustrated me because it's like hard to open up the bobby pin. Anyway, this is like one of the worst, oh my gosh, no. Ooh, do we remember this? I kind of feel bad for bringing it up again, but then I kind of don't because what a waste of money. This is like $45, stop it. Oh my God, this is like a disaster. This is the worst palette ever. They just did a horrific job in my opinion. They missed the mark. They could have done really cool things. They went in too many avenues all at once. It was like pop sugar, apparel, pop sugar pajamas, pop sugar makeup. It just wasn't done right. And this just felt, like whoever was buying this was gonna be wasting their money. Do we remember when I did the whole like awful products from Amazon and this was my foundation? It was a bad makeup day. Oh my God, my poor skin. All of the products that I have put on it over the past year, why? That is not a foundation. Um, so I'll link that video below if you care to watch it. I also wanna bring this up because I was kind of cleaning out my beauty closet and I was like, I had all my old video stuff and product regrets and I found this just like on a shelf. And I was like, oh, what do I do with this? Like Mia's gonna be so mad if I get rid of it. I had so much fun filming with her. She's like such a, she's just a little dolly. I love her. This kind of made me wanna get bangs. Like maybe that could be like my new, New Year, new me. I'm so mysterious. 
I don't even know my name. Sorry, Mia, but that was not a good look for me. I will forever cherish um, the memory of filming with you and the shoes that you gifted me with from Wish, those are up on a shelf and those will stay as like a visual representation to the memory of us filming together. But the wig is out of here, it's gone. So one of the absolute worst products of 2018 had to be the T3 hairdryer that ate my hair. I am still feeling the pain of that. And it was not even me that did it. It was a professional stylist who is talented and knows a thing or two about hair dryers. And it is just like beyond me how this happened. Let me find the piece. Like I always have wanted to, yeah, did we see? Oh my God, what is that? It's starting to grow, but this whole piece used to be the same length as my hair and it literally got like sucked up. I really feel like they were trying to be a little more competitive with more air getting in the dryer maybe and speeding up the dry time. I don't know, but it's just like too open and exposed in the back and your hair gets sucked in there and I think it's dangerous and I don't like it. So that's on my bad naughty list for 2018. Another really bad thing is the Crayola makeup, which Here's just to prove how my opinion is my opinion. We're gonna call my mom. We're FaceTiming her. Hello. Hello. How are you? What's up? I'm good. I'm filming right now. You're kidding. Mm -mm. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> hey. All right, so one of my absolute like fail products of the whole entire year is one that you actually really like, which is the Crayola makeup. Yeah. So are you yeah. still using it? I am, actually, but I do have a downfall to it, and that is that it goes on kind of lumpy, and it you have to mush it all around to make it even, but See? I still like the color. So you like and the, it's an old habit. You like the color. So, okay, but really, is it more that you like your makeup to be in, like, pencil form, like the chubby pencils, I, or? That's what it is. I, I find those easier. Okay. Me. All right. Okay. I'll, I'll call you after all I'm right. done filming. I love you. Okay, love you. All right, bye. Bye. So mom's okay with them. She's not near as picky as I am. But for me, that was like one of those hype moments. Everybody was making videos. A lot of them were leaning on the negative side, but none of that is really seen now. Like you don't see someone doing a get ready with me and being like, and now I'm gonna use my Crayola palette. That just doesn't happen. So moving on, I have some videos that I definitely wanna throw back to and mention really quickly as far as like the worst. Like we're saving the worst for last. Um, I definitely want to chat for just a, just, a, just, a, just a little moment about the Trish McAvoy BB cream. I still don't understand why the shade is actually orange. Like it's literally orange. It's not even like, oh, it was just too warm for you, Tati. It was too dark. It's like, even if I had deeper skin, it's just, it's straight orange for $120. Total disaster. Another disaster was the Louboutin Clear Lip Gloss. I vow to you right now. I'm vowing. Like we're, we're making a pact. I will never, ever, ever be purchasing another Louboutin product to review. The makeup is just a freaking waste of money. It is all packaging. The product itself is terrible and the lip gloss literally tastes like how plastic baby dolls smell. Stay with the shoes. Um, I also have right here, I never mentioned this. This is the Eye Stay Primer from Guerlain. This is a smoothing and long wear eye primer. I used this over and over and over and over, trying to like, in my brain, I was like, Guerlain, it's gotta work. Um, but this just did nothing. I didn't see any benefit or any difference when I wore this. I'm exploring different eye bases that have a little more color and pigment to them. I find that I really, really like that to cancel out my veins. And this just kind of feels like a waste of time. It's like do an eye cream and then do something like concealer or a, you know, painterly paint pot, something like that. But these eye bases that just dry down clear, I really don't see a big difference in the color saturation or wear time with them. So this was an expensive mistake for me. As far as like other videos that I can throw back to, L'Oreal had a powder to cream product that was pretty god awful. I really tried to find a lot of redemption with the product. And at the end of the day, when I was like cleaning everything out in my closet, I'm like, this has gotta go. Like these are just messy and they're fun 
and they kind of feel cool, but beyond that wow moment, it's just like, and then what? Like, I don't know, it was just kind of a little bit tricky to use and not worth it. And also, I think I started the year, like in one of the first fails of last year, I started with the spray on nail polish remover. That is such a no to me for so many reasons. Like they have this whole thing of like, it's such an answer to your prayers. You're not gonna knock over your nail polish. And Simply Nail Logical did the funniest video ever, kind of doing the infomercial of it. And like, she's like, I don't know, whatever I would do, I'm always knocking over my nail polish. And it's just like, yeah, is that really a big problem? No, it's probably not, you know? So just be spraying it in the air and like you're smelling it and it's just like, ugh. And then also on top of it, it didn't do a good job of like removing your polish. So through and through, like we started the year off and in my like first fails of the year, that was it. And I was just like, ugh, like going back through all of my bad products videos and I'm like so, grateful that I got rid of that one. So there we have it, a big healthy pile <laughs> of crappy products. Uh, these were the absolute duds of the past year. I hope you guys enjoyed, you know, taking a look back at some things that didn't work out. I think 2019 is going to be incredible. So I wanna thank you guys for watching my videos, for commenting, for being here as part of my family and letting me call this my job. So you guys are just the best. I have such major plans for the coming year. I really feel like I know exactly where I want my content to go. I'm very excited about it. I feel passionate about it. And I'm so grateful that you guys are a part of the ride. I'm feeling like moving forward this year, I want to bring more of what I'm really feeling and thinking and not overthinking it. As a YouTuber, I stress out about being misunderstood or saying the wrong thing or hurting feelings or needing to change my mind in the future or just like, there's just like so much pressure. And that's not how I speak to my friends and my family because they understand me and they understand that I'm gonna challenge myself, I'm gonna learn, I'm gonna grow. And I hope that you guys do the same thing. So, you know, here's to the next year being a year of acceptance accepting changes in yourself and like just going for it. That's what I'm all about. I have so much planned and I am just like on fire. I cannot wait for this year. It's gonna be such a good one. And I hope you guys have the same energy and excitement for it as well. And I'm wishing you all of the best things for 2019. I love you guys so much. If you have not yet subscribed, please do. And then while you're there, ring the bell. Ding-a-ling-a-ling, it's right here, just ring it. It's appetizing, ring the bell, and you will be notified of my upcoming videos. I am here Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. PST. Come hang out with me again, I would so love that. Go have a good one, and I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Mwah.